Welcome to Property Investing with Abby. I'm Abby, property investor mum of two, and today I'm dead excited I have my mentor, Paul Smith, founder of Touchstone Education, with me today to talk about the biggest thing that's in the news right now, spiraling Spiraling gas gas prices. prices. What are we gonna do and what does that mean to us? So Paul, I know I've got um, a four bed house. Yep. I've got two little kids. Yep. Um, they constantly want to be warm and have electricity, obviously, and Wi Fi. It's not like the old boring. days, is it? <laughs> um, I know some of my friends, and we're concerned because our gas prices are going up and we're just seeing the first bills come through. Sure. Um, so, why is it happening and what can we do to protect ourselves this year? Fabulous questions. Well, specifically, why is it going up? Mm. As the world recovers from a very low level of activity. Yeah and we had a cold winter last year. Reason number two, there's a massive gas pipeline just built from Russia to serve Europe, Mm -hmm. but the Germans haven't approved it yet from a technical perspective. Mm -hmm. So I'm not having a down at the Germans, any German people, I'm just saying a low starting point, increased activity, and the extra demand, sorry, the extra supply that's supposed to come on hasn't yet. So we've got a combination of factors. But all that has meant that the wholesale price of gas has more than doubled, so I'm sure you've seen over the last few months that all these gas and electric companies going bust. Yes, yeah, loads of those. Because you've got this thing called the price cap, uh-huh. uh, and the government essentially says whatever happens to your costs, you can't charge the consumer more than this. So of course, if they can only charge you £100 a month for your gas, yeah. but it's costing them £150 a month to buy the gas to sell to you, well, they're going to go bust, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. So why is gas prices going up? A bit of a technical answer there, um, but it's a combination of things. And essentially, it all comes back to inflation. And I don't know if you want to talk about that or not, but I, I don't know if most people know what inflation yes. is. No, because I didn't, and I think it's a great thing for you to explain that. The average energy bill to heat an average house, now this won't be you because you've got a big four bedroom house. Yes. Want. So the average family pays about £1,200? A year. A year. And that's projected to go up to £1,900. So the average family, so you know, if you're on tw- the average person's on £25,000. And after tax, it's not even that, is it? And they've got suddenly, just to keep warm, they've got to come up with an extra 700 quid. Gosh, yeah, that's a jump. It is a big jump. But if we put it in the context of that, I want to talk about something slightly unusual here. I want to talk about kebabs. We okay with this? Kebabs? Kebabs, yes. <laughs> Do you like kebabs, is my question. Now it's a bit Is that our plan of how we're going to combat these no. prices? No. Kebabs? No, 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 no. <laughs> Don't cork no. on your gas cop. <laughs> no. I just want to share with you why energy costs are at the root of everything. Have you noticed, as well as the gas, have you noticed it's more expensive to fill your car up the last few months? Yes. For me, it might have cost me 70, 80 quid to fill mm-hmm. my car up. It now costs me about 120 if it's completely yeah. empty. And it's yeah. been that kind of boom. Yeah. Energy costs drive all costs. Mm-hmm. And that's why I want to talk about kebabs. Mm-hmm. And I was listening to this piece, and there was this guy almost crying on the radio with frustration, rage. Yeah. And he's an energy broker. Okay. And he's been an energy broker for a long time. And he's the kind of guy that would help businesses you know, like you switch online. Yes, yeah, yeah. So if you want cheaper gas or electric or broadband, yeah. so he's one of those guys, but he does it for businesses. Yeah. And he said his oldest client owns a kebab shop in the northeast. And he didn't say where, so I don't know, Newcastle, Middlesbrough, mm-hmm. wherever. And he said that this guy was a very good businessman and he knew that his gas was coming at the end of its contract. So last December, he'd actually put a new contract in place for the new supplier to keep his costs under control. Yeah, yeah. What happens? This supplier that he's put the contract with goes bust. Okay. So January 2022, this energy broker has got to go and find a new gas supplier for this kebab shop, like zero notice, help, this, you, know, you can imagine. The extra costs for this little kebab shop per month, how much do you reckon? Extra costs for kebab shops. That's not as big as your house, is it? 20, 30 pounds a month extra? 6,000 pounds a month. 6,000 pounds? Because this is commercial gas and, you know, oh. takeaways, kebabs they use a lot of energy don't they yeah cooking a lot of food hot oil yeah if you divide that by four Mm -hmm. that's an extra 1500 pound a week say divide that to per day i'm going to cheat a little bit i'm going to say it's 1400 pound that's 200 quid a day what's going to happen to the price of kebabs yeah i get it people watching this are like oh my god gas prices to heat my house that's the thin end of the wedge so let's say i don't know i mean even if you're selling 
200 doner kebabs a day. Yeah. Even to stay still, he's got to put his prices up by a quid. Boom. We have not seen anything like what's going to happen over the next 12 months with regards to inflation. Mm -hmm. And if, if it's okay with you, yeah. I'd just like to give my simple version of what's inflation. Yes, because a lot of people get confused with this. Yeah, so inflation is the rising cost of things. Mm -hmm. Now at the moment, we're sat at 5.4%, as we sit here recording this in January 2022. In my predictions guide that I did last year, yes. I said Bank of England, no chance they've got it right. Because what they said is that inflation would peak Q1 2022 yes. at 5%, and that was last October. Yeah. We're already over 5%, and that's mm -hmm. before the gas prices. Yes. So when the gas prices hit, even now the Bank of England are saying that inflation is going to be over 7%. We're already at the highest inflation that's ever been seen in the last 30 years. Yeah. And it goes over 7%. Oh. So let's say we get stuck at 7% and there's all sorts of arguments I won't go into yeah. where I believe that we'll have a much higher level of inflation yeah. for a much longer time. The way I like to describe it is, let's say you've got a £20 note. Mm. In 10 years time, that £20 note is only going to be worth 10 because everything costs much more to buy. Okay, yeah. So you'll have to have double the amount of money to have so, the same. Yeah, same ten, lifestyle. Ten yeah. years after that, your £20 note is going to be worth five. Yeah. So if you put that into the context of the average salary, the average salary is £25,000 a year, and that'll give you a certain amount of yeah. £20 notes. Yeah. But if in 10 years' time that each £10, £20 note is only worth 10, you yeah. need to double your salary to keep up with inflation. So your £25,000 needs to become 50. Pounds. And then by the time your £20 is worth five, you need to quadruple your salary. Your average person now on 25 grand, they need to be earning £100,000 a year. Is that looking good? Are we okay on that? No, because even now, the average salary increase, the last statistics I saw, was around 4%. Yeah. So if you've got inflation at seven, you're losing out 3% each and every single year. So you've got to do something, Abby. Would you rely on the government to get us out of this situation? No, I no, would rely on them to get us not. into this situation. I'd rely on them to have a good party. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> And I don't really care if it's blue, red, you know, whatever. I wouldn't trust any politician as far as I could throw them. I genuinely don't believe that they've got the interests of the, you know, normal people at heart. So, like many things in life, we can't control what the world do does to us. Yeah. But we can control how we respond, can't we? So if we know that all of us are going to need a lot more money in the future yeah. because of gas prices, kebabs, you know, all the stuff, the petrol, everything yeah, going up. Yeah. So if we know that our average salaries are not going to allow us to have the same lifestyle, we need to earn some more money. Definitely, and I think that's the, and we've got the power to do that, haven't we? Yes. In ourselves. Yeah, so if I take you back, six years we've been working together now, haven't we? Yeah. If I take you back six years, this isn't meant to be critical, but you, the idea of you becoming a shareholder or businesses and anything terrified you, didn't it? Yeah. And how long ago was it that you actually became a property investor? Uh, about three and a half years ago. How much property you got now? I think 4.2 million. Well. And at the end of um, February, when we bought our other stuff, we're going to add another 1.3 million to that pot. Blimey, that's a lot of property. Roughly, would you make a month extra? Um, so after all my property costs and my costs of being a property landlord um, all go, I earn about 9,600 extra. So we call it 10. Yeah. Round number. Or even, no, let's make this simpler. Let's call it 100,000 a year. Yeah. Is that fair enough for everyone? That's four times the average salary. Mm. I mean, what difference does it make to you in the way that you kind of run your life and live your life? I mean, are you, are you worried? For me, when I saw all the gas and energy prices going up, it didn't have the panic it would have had um, six years ago. Because of your property income. Because of my property income, because I know I'm safe and I know if I need to, I can go out and potentially double my portfolio this year and double the income, because yeah. I've got, I know what to do. And that, not having that financial stress on you, it's like, you know, not having a weight on your shoulders, anything mm -hmm. anymore. And that's the biggest thing, I think, for property. I reckon you're probably in for, I'm sorry about this, probably an extra thousand, maybe 1,500 pound a year. Just coming up with 1,500 quid for gas stress you. No. See, no. that's what, that's the difference, isn't it? Yeah. But it would stress a lot of people. Yeah. And do you know the people I think it's gonna hit the hardest? It's the em empty nesters, but they've maybe got a house like yours, yeah. and their kids have moved out, yeah. and maybe even yeah. 
they're on a pension. Yeah. But there's quite a lot of uh, pensioners that live in quite big houses because they're their old family homes. So they could easily have to come up with an extra 1,500, yeah. 2,000 pound a year. And how do you do that when you're on like 150 pound a week on the state pension? No, you can't. And it, it reminds me of my dad. So my dad lives in quite a big house in Milton Keynes. Yeah. He's um, going through a divorce, so he's gonna be on his own. But he keeps telling me he's okay because he's retiring in a few years on a final salary pension. He'll be on 32,000 for the rest of his life, but he, he's not going to be okay, is it? Because even in no. five years' time, and my dad ideally would love to go and live out in Spain, but to do that, mm. um, I keep talking to him about, you know, getting some property, having yeah. that income to help him. Yeah, and if you put and 32,000, don't get me wrong, it's a good pension yeah. by most people's standards. Yes, yeah. Because you're talking roughly two and a half grand a month, aren't you? Yes, but he lives in Milton Keynes, which yeah. is, you know, a lot more expensive. expensive especially yeah. in big house. Yes, yeah. But if you were out of magic wand yeah. and you wanted to double your dad's income from you know, two and a half grand a month to five grand a month, if he would actually engage with you and follow the property strategies, how long do you reckon it would take to get him an extra two or three grand a month? Probably three or four months. My dad really likes commercial property and you could do that with just one commercial one. deal and, and with the knowledge that I've got, I, I, I could 100% help him. Great point. I mean, my first commercial property ever in my pension scheme was the shelter charity shop up in Scotland. Yes. Yeah. I've had it for years. Yes. And the rent on that is thirty thousand pounds a year just for that one shop. There you go. Which is two and a half grand a yeah, month. Yes, that's it. It's just one shop. Yeah. He doesn't want a hassle and he's got very big fears about bad tenants, even though I've told him in my experience of doing property and looking after an estate agency, not all you know, they have a very bad rep. But because he wouldn't want any of that hassle and he just want the income, commercial, commercial would be great. My dad's not quite there yet, but I'm still working on him mm. and I'm hoping him to bring him down um, at some point just showing my properties yeah. and my property portfolio. My mum, on the other hand, um, probably because she lives next door to Rebecca. me, she knows. Rebecca. She listened to me and she's actually gone off and started her property portfolio. Well, technically, that's not true, is it? But she didn't listen to me. <laughs> she what actually talk. happened is Abby got her to come along to Wealth Through Property because Abby's mum was like, You're going to go bust, you're going to go bankrupt. You do scam. Exactly. <laughs> but she came along. I remember she sat in the front row for Wealth Through Property. She did. Like teacher's pet. <laughs> Abby been trying to tell it to do property for two years. She comes to spend two days with me and suddenly Property's what you need to do, Abby. She's making a few quid now, isn't she? She is, she's doing really well. And um, she's just bought a bungalow that she's about to do buy refer refinance yeah. for. Nice. She's looking for a bigger holiday let and she's got a bit of a plan in a few years that her income will be enough that she can retire and then nice. and she'd like to go abroad as well. I just want to make it very clear she didn't listen to Abby. <laughs> Thanks. So, biggest thing, Paul, what can everybody out there, the average person, what can we do? Well, my route, your route, is to acquire assets. Yeah. In my case, it was initially property. Here's the thing, if you want to be wealthy, in my, from my perspective, you need to have assets, properties, that give you money in exchange for, this is the tricky bit for most people, not working. How do you like the idea of getting money? for not working. Brilliant, and I think that's given us loads of food for thought. So Paul, that's just one part of today. Mm -hmm. The next thing I was thinking about is I'm a property investor, I've yes. got a lot of property. How are the increase in prices gonna hit my portfolio? Woo, uh, love to answer you, need to do it properly. I think that's a big question, suggestion. Uh, could I invite you onto my Money Matters show on yes. Wednesday? Yes, yeah. And we'll kind of do the same thing, Yeah. but from a specific perspective of being a property investor. Yes. So please like the video, subscribe to the channel because you don't want to miss these weekly and then leave us a comment. Let us know if you've seen stuff increasing or the craziest increase you've seen at the minute because we'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much. Pleasure. And that's this week's episode of Property Investing with Abby.